Good evening, everybody. Jacob Daniel here. This is the Daniel Three Podcast. Um, so we're back with uh, Andrew and Andrew. Um, you know, of course, popular Andrew uh, being being the evil one. So we we'll <laughs> refer to the evil Andrew uh, for the for the rest of the episode just to keep things straight. Um, actually, no. Uh, uh, good Andrew's last name is straight. Um, so you know, there, there's some there's some fun puns there that we could. We could uh we could make but you know Let's go right back to middle school Let's right yeah <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's the first thing i said to you when you uh friend requested me on facebook i was just like your last name is gay bro <laughs> yeah probably it might have been sure enough <laughs> so i'm sure you've gotten that a lot but yeah. um but yeah so um you know this is i think i think this is the third time um that that we've uh i've had andrew uh from popular liberty on the show and um, this will be our second conversation that's kind of an ongoing unpacking about uh, what 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 is Christian love? What does the Bible say about, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, what separates Christian love and, and godly love from the, the world's conception of love? And and we're going to go a little bit deeper into it tonight as well, I think, and explore some of the implications of that. And, you know, um, as far as how we go from Christian love to uh, morality and and you know kind of where uh, the secular uh, uh, the secular does fall 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 short I guess so um, I just know, want I think- to point out before we start that you know like good Andrew has the no step on snake uh, flag in the background and I have like the, the portrait of Saint Michael stepping on the original serpent you know pulling a Derek Chauvin on him <laughs> 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 That's the evil one. <laughs> 
Yeah, that, that is such a depends funny on what contrast. snake you're stepping on. I'm fine right. with stepping right. on Satan. Fine with that. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. If, I mean, if you're taking a knee on his head or putting your spear through the back of his head, that's based. Exactly. <laughs> I will say, like, I, I know. Uh, I can't breathe. Very, yeah, um, that's the point. <laughs> w- w- one of the uh, one of the Catholic, uh, like some of the things. Sometimes, like Protestants get really triggered with like the um, the way the ways in which uh, Catholics will will really. Uh, hold mary up on like a pedestal and stuff but i've always yeah. liked the whole thing of like mary stepping on the snake because it, it's just like the, that that contrast especially <laughs> <laughs> just like it's like you know the because because catholics like will will mm-hmm. portray mary as like you know the you know the perpetual virginity and the being very uh you know highly yeah. virtuous and very like um immaculate Christian. and stuff and and then it's just like and then she's just like you know fuck this snake <laughs> stepping on it. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, yeah. So, um, so I think, you know, th- there's a lot of ways that we could start this out. I guess maybe the, the best way we could do it uh, would be to, to, to punt over to uh, evil Andrew, because you've been, uh, I feel like, I don't know if it's five different arguments or if it's just one continuous argument that you've been having with Ace over the past two weeks. That you think I, He's been, it's a multiple different, but they all have the same exact source. Yeah, exactly. source disagreement. And uh, that's that, you know, I think he uh, he's denying causality. The, his idea is that, you know, moral first principles do not necessarily, and actions taken based on them do not necessarily have, uh, you know, uh, moral outcomes. And I'm like, no, that's that's breaking cause that's breaking causality, yeah. Because uh, anyway, but that yeah, that, that's like the cent- that one of several central disagreements. We also disagree on you know how property rights work, how we get there, and we agree on most of the conclusions, you know, yeah, which is kind of a coincidence. But the uh, but the how we actually get there and how it actually works are very different. And because I'm coming from the idea that, hey, God has the first cause, you know, God is love. So love is the first cause of the universe. (laughs) So, okay, so any ideas that uh, so any moral system that should be, you know, it should be metaphysically derived from God and the or should be derived from the the these uh, this behavior of love, this selfless love that we see, you know, in God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. You know, it's they are all reciprocating this, you know, agape love. So, we you know what does this actually look like as a system for human behavior, and how and uh, how do we design a laws based around this? And so, one of the things I I do very quickly as well. Okay, love requires an actor that requires a person. You know, you know, basically. So that per, and that it must be freely chosen. Therefore, I get to self ownership. Like so, it's like I'm not starting with uh you know self-ownership i'm starting with love and then working and i get to to self-ownership very quickly as a as a requirement no yeah so. and, and i think that makes sense and like, another way that i've often you know try to conceptualize this because i feel like uh, you know secular people but especially sometimes in in libertarianism there's been attempts to try to come to a, a sort of you know um morality without um, appealing to God, and you know, I think Hoppe with argumentation ethics makes a decent mm-hmm. attempt at this. But but even then, I think where a lot of these fall short is that they don't realize that, that they're making like a couple presuppositions. Like they're presupposing, uh, and and the presuppositions they have are things that come from our worldview, right? Mm-hmm. Like they're entirely like, presupposing morality, yeah, you know, Christian well, morality, which is strange to me. Well, but they're, they're pre- but they don't, but they, they don't presume our ethics, which is very different. The morality and ethics are technically two different things. Ethics means interpersonal, whereas morality is just individual. Well, they're, they're also presupposing our moral language, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're like the ideas of good and evil, and mm-hmm. and and stuff like that. And it's like you know, and I've talked to uh to 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 read um on his show about this read cover. And I'm like, you know, it, it's just funny that that we come from different, um, you know, sources for this. But for some reason, I can't quite understand on, you know, atheism or naturalism, why uh, pedophilia would not just be something that would have the same outrage that maybe somebody uh, who, you know, like parked where they weren't supposed to and got a parking ticket. You know what I mean? It's like it's like, why? Why is one? 
you know, uh, like, a, oh, this was a, a small infringement on, on you know, breaking contract or, or, or violating property rights or whatever, and you get a slap on the wrist. And the other one, uh, we make, you know, a bunch of jokes about throwing them into wood chippers. It's like, so what, which, which, you know, I, I concur with, but it's like, where does that moral outrage come from on, uh, on, on atheism or naturalism? And I, I don't feel like, and, and I love Reed, but I don't feel like he's ever given me a good answer for, answer for that other than just like, I think he said something along the lines of, he's like, well, I don't, you know, need religion to be morally outraged at that. And it's like, well, you don't need to believe in it, but I don't know. I kind of feel like, like, you know, there's something informing that, that outrage. But I think beyond the moral language, I think that uh, people are presupposing that the universe has a consistency to it and they're also i think presupposing the laws of reason and logic as 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 being valuable you know what i mean it's like well it, the uh you know there this is kind of what aristotle talked about a lot that hey the, the problem with uh you know assuming the you know the atheist naturalist point of view is that you get a uh, basically an infinite regression and you in the laws of causality break down because you need a first cause for for a lot for all of logic to work therefore metaphysically you must say that there there is a first cause to the universe and the universe itself cannot be infinite which by the way the you know science has empirically confirmed though you know this this thing is has a, a very finite age mm -hmm. and you know this is this is not an infinite universe so uh so uh, you know effectively you know they you know they can't argue that the uh, universe is infinite and so you know even right there you know, it's like you, you have to ask, well, OK, well, what was the first cause of creation? And, you know, I mean, granted, we exist this, the, you know, this universe that we have definitely had had a uh, starting point. What caused it? And what was that first cause? You know, and, you know Christians immediately say God and uh, you know, atheists have to say, I don't know. And the problem that you get from that is that, well, now you, you've you've based your all of your, uh, you know, ideas about about morality on a metaphysics that you have no basis for you know the, yeah. you have a uh, you have a complete you know you have a completely broke uh broken and non-functional metaphysics to say nothing of your epistemology epistemology means how it's true metaphysics is the, the logic of the universe well and, and i remember um like two instrumental the uh, i guess like you know christian mm -hmm. philosophers that um that, that that really helped me and when i was kind of like putting together you know my, my beliefs and stuff were c.s lewis and william lane mm -hmm. craig um but they were both relying on a lot of uh you know things that that are very you know pr prevalent uh, and deep in catholicism and from from ca catholic oh yeah uh philosophers but like the idea is that like um the well so with uh william lane craig he will make the argument basically for the first cause, like he'll make, there's like the Kalam cosmological argument. And then there's also just, um, you know, kind of like the, the, the Aquinas argument for the, for the unmoved mover. And then he's like, so once you get to the idea of God, then there's a natural, like logical following from that for why, if God exists, he would be good and he would be loving. And he, you know, and it's like, if you were to presuppose God and then try to put it as, well, God is evil, well, it actually wouldn't follow from an evil God that the universe shapes out the way that it does right now. And yeah, um, and, and C.S. Lewis does this as well in, in a lot of his writings, mm -hmm. but especially in uh, a lot of the stuff you'll find in mere Christianity. Where because again, he, you're breaking yeah. causality there. That if there's an evil God, this you know, however it's evil, the first cause of the universe is going to have a different effects. You know, it's like it, it, no matter what, this law of causality always goes back to a loving God of Christianity. And mm -hmm. there's no way around it, you know, that, that you can always say that the, you know, the first cause of the universe was effectively love. And because this is the product, the force of production, this is the force of life that, and this is, you know, I, I made the, uh, the archotropism argument for God, the, uh, you know, like a little while, a little while ago, kind of as a joke, but it's like, oh, if shit, actually that works <laughs> because what, you know, if, if you can say that, Hey, cause, cause and effect are only distinct across time. You know, and, you know, God, God theoretically is outside of time and he's like the first mover. Uh, the, it's not theoretical. He is outside of time. Yeah. So the uh, so what you can say is that, OK, well, what what is the uh, you know, you can take one look at life 
and you can and you can see very quickly that you know what the essential function of life is to it, it is a struggle against entropy a struggle against chaos to apply order inward keep order in and keep chaos out and the better that and so life is constantly trying to uh you know evolve this this you know, if you're taking a theory of evolution that you know at point of view to try to disprove god this like completely destroys you because if, if let's say you're taking an evolutionary point of view where life is trying to uh you know build itself up in order to resist uh in order to resist uh what you call it uh chaos well the problem you get you get there is that now you now it's not simply true that you know axiomatically true that hum, that humans act using means at, you know across time in order to achieve ends it's also axiomatically true that that uh, life takes this point that, that takes does the exact same thing where it uses you know means uh, you know at means across time to achieve the ends of you know more order in you know more and chaos out and so what you get is that you know even down to the cellular level life itself is trying to apply order using force yeah you know, it's, it's trying to achieve order using force and yeah you know, that and that is the uh so what you can say from that is okay well now we've entered game theory so what so now that you've entered game theory you can say okay well you know the individual you know game this is a competitive get this is obviously a competitive game you know as you know so what so uh what do you want uh, uh, you know first immediately well what you'd want is more is better teammates <laughs> bigger better stronger more teammates and so you get to a naturally immediately you get to a cooperative gameplay now what what's the best kind of cooperative strategy well tribal you know tribal love basically <laughs> where you where you end up with okay my family my team my tribe we you know we are you know we are going to be productive to each other and competitive to everybody else and doing this we can actually you know have you know the best kind of team building exercise uh, mentality where we, you know, love again is productive, you know, fruits of the spirit. So love is naturally productive. So it's, it's actually producing good things again, like value for value. You trade it and it creates more value. And this is the same exact uh, thing that's underlying the universe. So what you get now is that, okay, so Darwin's razor is actually Christian's love. So that you know the uh, so yeah. actual natural selection itself, you know, is is predicated on praxeology, and from praxeology, I can get really quickly to okay. So love is actually the you know the best kind of cooperative gameplay strategy. The, the, right. Not just any kind of love. The Catholic version, the, the, okay, the Christian version. The of Christian love. version, yeah. Because yeah, I mean, all, but the well, vast Protestants majority of and, go Protestants ahead. and Catholics don't really disagree on that. No, so it's like theoretically we don't. Yeah, theoretically we don't. So except for the French Protestants, I mean. Yeah, uh, the, the ortho. Yeah, fr Frenchies definitely, but uh, Orthodox are a little different on you know how that works. You know, they have they they have a different kind of definition. I'm still. Dude, I still cannot to... figure out Orthodox Christianity because every single one oh, I talk great. to explains <laughs> it to me differently, mm -hmm. and so I'm just like, I I, I don't got a clue. <laughs> well, yeah. The thing the thing I've discovered about about Orthodox Christianity is that. It, it's not right by itself. You, you kind of have to take orthodox theology um, and and examine it under the lens of either Catholicism or Protestantism. Either one will do. But once you do, like you get a very holistic view of what Christianity should be. I think I think all 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 three major Christian sects have have some 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 degree of, of truth in them. Um, and, and different emphases. Yeah, yeah, they emphasize different things, and and I, I realize that there's some fundamental differences between yeah. all of them that made them split in the first place. But that's not what Christ wanted us to do. He didn't want us to to be split and divided like that. I think he wanted us to actually come together and 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 hash these things out. And yeah, yeah but he so. he did give us a you know which I think will end up being the uh, the resolution to you know all of the schisms is that he gave us a really good uh, you know uh, method for figuring out which one was which is that you know you will know it to be by its fruits yeah so you will know how how you know which one is good by the fruits it produces and yeah. so eventually and again you know love is you know the first cause of the of the universe we can prove that Darwin's razor is you know is you know the Chris, the christian idea of love you know therefore we you know and because cause and effect only differ across time i can prove that the cause of life itself you know 
is you know christian love right so anyway that you know what i can get to from there is that okay well how, you know how is this going to play out well whichever uh of the uh, religions figures out how to you know you know act on this concept of christian love best is going to be the one that succeeds and the ones who don't are necessarily going to kind of fall by the wayside because anything that's not love is sin sin is anti-productive or unproductive and so you're yeah, actively destructive so, yeah yeah yeah, right, so, yeah, that's, that's yeah, I got you. yeah counterproductive or you know destru or self-destructive and so this is and this is like kind of the underlying force for why the catholic church never seems to uh you know it, it never like it, you know we, we've had all kinds of bad popes all kinds of bad magisteriums never sticks and that the reason being is that our, our incentive structure is designed to kind of take advantage of this uh this you know idea of, of christian love and that it's an it's a ideological monarchy not a hereditary monarchy and so what so what you have is uh you know hey the the bishops come up through the church and then but they're all appointed by the pope and the pope decides which one is are going to be cardinals and elected to the college of cardinals and the college of cardinals is where we you know they, they select the next pope when they die and then the pope you know in turn select them so in other words the pope is always going to be selecting someone who's ideologically kind of in tune with him uh you know as a as members of the next pool who are going to be uh who are who are going to be uh you know eligible to become pope now the key here is that you know whenever you have an ideology that doesn't work and you have people who are in spread out throughout the world they're all trying different things some things work some things don't and so the things that don't work necessarily are unproductive. You're not going to produce people who, who are actually going to make it, you know, to the top, you know, to make that it to uh, to meet that selection criteria. So they're naturally going to. So if they're trying like liberalism and all that, which, by the way, this is not the first time that, you know, we've ha we've had liberalism. The, we've had that before and it sucks every time we try it. Never works. Always. It's always self-destructive. What, what ends up happening is that, you know, hey, the, the, the more you adopt this self-destructive element, you know, the less the less your idea, your ideas are going to be represented in the next few generations. So if you're in the, uh, you know, if you're basically like trannies or something like that, you're never going to get represented. So like the Methodists are done. Quick, quick <laughs> question. Quick question. Um, because I, I'm actually just not familiar with with the history that you're talking about. I'm not saying you're mm -hmm. wrong, but. When, when before the enlightenment when was the last time liberalism was tried in the world oh yeah uh, you had like an had it in big time in rome you had it a few times you had it in the uh end of the uh middle ages in the in like venice and you had you had oh, republics okay. spread all throughout and anytime you have a republic you have liberalism okay. and yeah, that, yeah, you I know, mean, it, yeah yeah republics are the instantiation of liberalism and it honestly never like if like if you were to read like if you were to take the proper nouns off of places and people and just mm -hmm. read like things that were written as current events 2000 years ago in Rome yeah. compared to things written today, like there's, there's a very eerie amount of similarity there. Um, oh, I mean, yeah. we're literally going through the same breakdown in culture that, that, that happened in Rome, mm -hmm. um, which led to increased authoritarianism, which led to, you know, a lot of bad shit. <laughs> oh yeah so, and so. uh but yeah so, so the uh and you can also you can actually you can even go back to like the book of judges you know what happened repeatedly <laughs> and they the uh you know every time they like try to really focus on the self and you know be, go all naturalism and we don't really need god anymore we're gonna you know see other people how did that work out for them yeah <laughs> and so it literally does not work no matter what every time we try liberalism you know which is predicated on naturalism it never works and it's always you know self-destructive and counterproductive and always ends with you know the the most uh fervent adherence getting so yeah you know, they well, i would argue the but, then, but then but then the old testament was like after judges they go into this like um hereditary monarchism which which also is is largely yeah. unsuccessful mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, so for opposite reasons, yes. <laughs> so it's like, you know, um, you know, r radical individualism separate from God, you know, ha has its failed end and, and this hereditary mm -hmm. monarchism has its failed end. And, you know, basically we're left with either, you know, anarcho-capitalism or, you know, this 
you know what, what you're proposing which is this like our you know based in archotropism this you know kind of like uh well, private, private, society. private yeah private statecraft which to me the difference between the two is you know it's, yeah, it's almost like framing if you had an ancap community and and a, and a private law society right next to each other they get along just fine well and it really irritates me how so many people get so autistic about terms that they it's like it's like i don't like listen like there are already with before you know like like andrew's ideas and stuff there were like five different things that basically all described the same sort of private law society. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. some people like the word capitalism and some people don't like the word capitalism. I'm just like, you know, it's just, Monarch you know, capitalism now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, uh, I, well, but and, yeah, and it, yeah. So the but idea it's, that, that, uh, yeah, that, that, uh, like, Hey, every time we've tried this, it doesn't work. And so if you're, uh, so no matter what, Liberals are always self-destructive. This is why I'm so white-pilled about our current situations, that liberals are always self-destructive. Like, literally, yeah. if we could just take the education system, they're all dead in, a, in, in like, two they, decades. You know even I mean? if we don't, they tear them. They tear their own selves apart. I mean, they, you, you look at what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. They can't They can't decide which which oppressed minority has, has the, you know, um, priority over another. You know, they're, they're, just, they're tearing themselves apart over, over who's more oppressed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, as, and the... Uh, you know, for them, it's always a, ma a mad power grab, which is, you know, the opposite of love. It doesn't right. work and it's always <laughs> counterproductive. So the, so, you know, they're, you know, they, they never, ever win. And so this is the, uh, you know, it's like the whole game of reality is rigged against yeah, them. It's I, like, I wouldn't say they either... never win that because, because they kind of do sometimes, but they, they don't win permanently. It's always short lived. Yeah. It's always short lived. And by yeah, the way, they're winning. It's always, you know, kind of, C.S. Lewis made this point too. Their winning is always predicated on the right because evil is yeah. a parasite. Yeah, so the left it, cannot exist without the right. It's just, a, it's just the thing I'm concerned about is how much damage they do while while they're winning. You know. Yeah. Like, take take the Soviet Union as Soviet Union as an example. You know, perfect mm -hmm. perfect communist society, fifty million people or more killed. You know, in, in well, eighty yeah. some well, years. Well, the way, but I think the way to win, which is something that that i think we would all agree on is that you have to reshape the the government and society to be something that is almost entirely based upon competency because mm -hmm. these people would not be right <laughs> like these people would not be able to have the competency uh necessary to to get their way to the mm -hmm. top of these sort of hierarchical governments that that we are all kind of in favor of mm -hmm. so like they would not have like right now the problem is what we have now is almost the opposite like it's like the worst people the least qualified people kind of like get their get are, are able to get the in there and get power yeah. right yeah so yeah. The, the more the more you have um systems of government that that match natural hierarchies the the less yeah. uh incompetent weak and when i say weak i don't just mean like like physically weak, I mean like morally weak people get in charge of these of these systems of power. Mm -hmm. That's why I really like the idea of a corporation is that it's actually mirrors the idea of Christian love and it you know in a kind of self serving sort of way. This is like our the major invention that where you know humans figured out how to decentralize Christian love and to where I don't actually have to know you. All I have to know is the price, which is like your proof of work. And so you have proof of work on all three sides of the corporation. There's just the shareholders who had to have proof of work in order to buy the shares in the first place. And, you know, and then there's the management who had the proof of work in order to sell stuff to the customers and make profit for the, uh, and make profit for the shareholders and the customers themselves who had to trade, uh, you know, a, you know, they had to have proof of work in order to have goods and services to trade with said corporation, namely money. And so when you have that, you, know, you have it on all three sides where all three sides are set, trying to say, okay, I have to do more for you than you're doing for me. And what does that look like? That's, that's selfless love. You know, it's like, I'm putting your, your good ahead of mine. Value I think for the value. Beard is compensating value. for something. Huh? <laughs> I said, I think the beard is compensating for something. But <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So that, no so, comment. Yeah, when you have, you don't the, have to uh, comment on that. Yeah, basically the uh, you know the, like these co these corporations they they mimic the idea of, of Christian love, and so the so what you ha so this is why I advocate hey we need a government that looks like this uh, is is that this is actually what mirrors the uh, uh, 
you know, Christian love. So, so, you know, it's not, I'm not promising utopia. I'm just saying, okay, it's, this is probably going to work a lot better the, uh, yeah. than what, than the alternatives. And we've tried all the alternatives for 6,000 years. They yeah. don't work. And, and using, using that, that corporation type government, mm -hmm. you know, so to speak, um, I, I, I could see how that, how your, your ideas about, about monarchy could, could even play along with that because if you look at actual corporations right now, a lot of times you have one person leading leading the company from their youth until they're just incapable of leading it anymore. You know, yeah, well, it's and, and basically I, a lifetime appointment. What, what really CEO. bothers if you look me? at like uh, well, Elon Musk, Musk today. You know, he has some proof of work. He bought himself some Twitter stock and, you know, hey, hopefully we can get King Elon as a, as a CEO soon. And so <laughs> hey, uh, if, if all he is is king of, king of Twitter, I'm happy with it. Let's, let's, let's go. He can be king of Twitter. Yeah, Resurrect all the dead Twitter accounts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump be first. Great? Bring us Trump I'm, back. Yeah, I'm gonna need to know. It'll be, it'll, it'll be like the you. it'll be like the end of Matthew when all the all the dead rise and are yeah. in the streets again in <laughs> Jerusalem. <laughs> yeah, and we can get the. Uh, you know, but have Nick Fuentes as head of trust and safety mm. <laughs> or head of censorship <laughs> of who oh, gets gosh. censored. That'd be, wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> we, wait, um, if, we, if, if we do that, can we block Hillary Clinton? Oh, please. We have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the, the, uh, so yeah, if we, uh, you know, have stuff like this where, you know, Hey, the government works this way. Well, okay. Well, well what happens if you have a, monarcho capitalist and an anarcho capitalist society right next to each other well because you said my property my rules what you just did was you told all of the competent reptiles that you know they can have basically unlimited power make any rules that they want without no, with any no constitutional limits as long as they're in charge so what they're going to do is you know form up these corporations with whatever like work that they can whatever uh resources they have they'll get together with other elites they trust and slowly but surely, they will consolidate all of the land and all of the territory. <laughs> and well, so, natu right now, so naturally, you know? so naturally, anarcho-capitalism ends with monarcho-capitalism, monarcho no matter what. Well, and, and, what, and, and to me, this is self-evident. If anyone's ever been in in business and, and like really understands, like the the problem with some people. So one of the more like I guess Lalbert takes people will have is they'll be like, oh well, you know. I'm a I'm an anarcho-capitalist, but I'm all right with, you know, voluntary socialism and worker co-ops and stuff. And, you know, and it's kind of it, it's like in, so, so listen, like, you know, on one hand, yes, it doesn't violate the NAP. So who cares? But on the other hand, it's like that's actually not what really like there's a reason those models are not don't work. They don't work. Yeah, like they, they don't happen very often in the marketplace because anyone who's ever been in business, it's like imagine trying to run a business with more than five people where there's not any one person in charge and everybody has to collectively decide on every decision that has to be made. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Like it no, just, it it's such an inefficient and, and sloppy way to try to get things done. And actually like successful businesses have a, a, a hierarchical model that, that put people in positions where they are the, the, the most efficient. And, you know, there's no reason to think that in a, you know, private law society that, you know, government isn't going to be subject to those same market forces. Like, yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? So which I, which I think really which I think is basically what you've been saying for months. But the problem is people are just like triggered because you're afraid. I think the real reason yeah. is that you're framing it in in Catholicism and Christianity and People are just consistent. <laughs> logically consistent. It's the only way. I right. think the, the other problem who you could get have, there from Protestantism, though, you could. Yeah, it's a little more difficult, I, but you I have. <laughs> we'll have. We'll have. Yeah, well, the problem know. is then th th there would be fifty different versions of archotropism that would be fighting with each other. <laughs> yeah, because that's yeah. what Protestants do. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think the other the other problem people have with with Andrew is is that the conclusions that you come to are what really trigger them. Right. Oh like, yeah. You, you you can use whatever words you want, and you and Ace can argue back and forth all day long. And it's like, in the end, like we all kind of agree on on the general concepts that we're talking about. It's when you go and say it's be it's because of these concepts that I'm choosing um, 
monarcho-capitalism and you versus Ace, who is like, I think he's just a general anarchist. I don't think he's on one side or the other. I, I'm not quite sure, but like these, you guys are, are coming to completely right. different conclusions, you know, and that's that's where, where people really have a problem one way or the other. I mean, he's like the, uh, the like the ultra autistic side, you know, where it's like, you know, like the cult of Kinsella. Yeah, basically, that's like the Kinsella types are very different than the Rothbardians, and they're mm -hmm. very different from the Hoppians. They are their own little thing. I mean, they're kind of out there with the Randians, uh, who right. are not who are not ancaps; they're minarchists, but you know, they're like out there, and <laughs> you know, they they have their own you know thing where you know, like they interpret all of this very differently. And it's like it's like people who follow Sterner or something. I'm, I'm like y'all got some weird beliefs like i i get yeah. the appeal of starter sometimes but mm, they're like nope. the I, they're like the jw's of anarchism is yeah the, the way i see <laughs> them you know that they, they, they are out there and so you know when i you know when I, I you know when i'm arguing with him it's like i understand like instinctively like i'm not arguing with like a normal rothbardian or something like that who are a lot more like mainstream and they've actually thought this this stuff through and they understand that Oh, actually, you know, moral consequences do follow from moral first principles, and right. they understand. And this is why they they make such different uh, outlooks on how things should work. Like, you know, like I had one uh, argument with Ace a while back where he was like, "Oh, no, 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 the the homeless guy actually owns the child's park because he pitched his tent there, and that's you know, Lockean first principles or yeah, whatever." No. <laughs> and, you know, this is actually the morally consistent way that, that you know, we, we should let the homeless person own that property. I'm like, this is retarded. Yeah. Well, and, no. and this is, I was, I was thinking and, about this Like today. a Rothbard would be like, no, you know, we're, 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 that, that's for the kids and the homeless, but then the bomb has got to leave. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about this today. Like this, that, that same line of argumentation can get you to this place where um, uh, mutualism, right? Where one of the things mutualists believe is that, is that like people, squatters have legitimate claim on, yeah. on property right and it's He's like so fucked, yeah <laughs> that's like no like uh, if, if i even if i have an extra house and i'm not using that house currently that doesn't give you a right to go and just like take it from me that's literal yeah. theft <laughs> uh, yeah I mean, I like now, that. something one thing that anarchists do say that that i i do kind of agree with is that our um our rights end where our ability to actually secure those rights begins so like if 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 I have two houses and I don't have any guns, I don't have security, anything like that to try to defend that? that second house, then can I really claim the right to that second house without some external force enforcing that claim, i.e. the state? I mean, I, I yeah, get I their line the of thinking of there, but go ahead. What are you going to say? Yeah, like where's the proof of work? You right. know what I mean? And it's like, I mean, but, you know, power is basically a permissionless protocol. And so like, you know, I don't need to get your permission to actually do stuff to you. And yeah. so <laughs> it's like, is it fucked up? Yeah. Does it work? Yeah. And, and the, uh, and the question, it really becomes, okay, well, uh, you know, in what sense? Well, by the way, I, you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you, dude, but yeah, you'd be sorry. so proud of me. I finally blocked that uh, black mutualist guy, whoever, whoever oh, he I blocked is. Him a like, long time ago. <laughs> He's I, way too I, lefty. He, he was he was like cordial with me for the longest time, and then he just like flipped a switch and and went off the deep end with me. So I blocked him. But anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I've been getting a whole bunch of good blocks today, but I blocked him a long time ago. Like the uh, he had some atheist remark to me, and. And like I can be nice to atheists, I'm you know, and uh, you know, like Jose Gallison and Reed Coverdell, these guys are yeah, great. There's some cool uh, atheists out there. I mean, let's yeah, just they're, they're atheists, but not assholes about it. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And if you're an asshole about it, like I, you're gone. And, and they have the same. They do the same thing about us. Like we're, we're Christians, but we're not asshole Christians. So that's why they're yeah. friends with us. Just yeah. moral of the story is don't be an asshole. <laughs> exactly. But if you you know if you are going to be uh, like saying okay, I have this right. You know, but it's like that's that's cute. Now face the wall. Yeah, it's like, what, what do you really have the right? Oh, in, God, in what sense you actually have something? You know, it's almost like they have this. You know, the, the, it's like the Kinsella cult. This, you know, their rights are you know wh where they put their intellectual property. Yeah, like they actually don't exist. <laughs> and so the uh, you know it's, it's I find that so ironic. They don't believe in intellectual property because you know it's like that's just an idea in your head. Well. So are your rights, basically? <laughs> so yeah, it's unless like, you can defend them, I mean. It's like, well, I remember. Uh, I remember when I first um, 
started to get to know Jose and we had to talk about Sterner and that's kind of something that uh that uh Sterner talked about which was kind of like you know rights are just like kind of a fart in the wind without any kind of power to yeah. like actualize them or enforce them you know what i mean it's like you can say you know i have these rights but it's like i, I mean at the end of the day like it's it's action and you know some sort of p- power to I love uh, that means. yeah pretty much <laughs> I can't and read the, it. Uh, well, is it backwards? It, oh well. I get the idea though. Yeah, you know, it, it's the, it's the same thing where you know where it's like, but if we don't use the government, how are we going? If we use the government to take people, uh, I mean, to uh, t- against our enemies, how are we going to stop our enemies from using it against us? And like they're in like a firing line. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's like that stone toss comic is the, is like the best. I you know I have it complete. I've saved on my phone. I'm never going to delete it because uh, it's so useful. But the idea is like okay, you and you can get here from Christian love that hey love requires choice what is and so the more choice you're able to make the more uh, the more you're able to love well what do we call that we call that power because that's the power to make decisions so this is where you get to the idea that a loving god is necessarily an all loving god a perfectly loving god is necessarily an all powerful god mm-hmm. and so the idea that hey christians should seek power yes because power purifies love and it's you know power is a purification thing it doesn't let it it doesn't change you it doesn't corrupt you it's like you're already corrupt and it purifies that corruption uh, or you are already loving and it pur- purifies that love and you and so the the idea that power is just like some some natural evil is like just that's just wrong no it's that uh, you know god is all I powerful think it depends on, I, I think it depends on what kind of power we're talking about because i, I think power again power that's gained through like the, the natural power yeah, that you, you have for, through like um being at the top of your respective hierarchy you know i agree with with you on that uh yeah, through merit basically. yeah through merit exactly like pa- pa- yeah pa- power you know the quote-unquote power that that they get through our current you know, uh, socialized democratic republic or whatever you want to call it. You know, I definitely, like I definitely think, station. yeah, like, I definitely have some issues with Christians who would try to use that um, because I feel like there's, there's only, you know, at least at the federal level, like, there's just, there, there's nothing like, mm-hmm. like it's, it, you know, that's where the whole analogy of just trying to use the ring of power for good rings true. But the problem is like, that's the federal government when you try to equate the federal government with the state governments and the state governments with localities and stuff, then it's like, well, then, then the metaphor kind of falls apart because like not all, not all statism is the same and it's kind of autistic to equate it. And then it's like, like if we're we're talking and if we're talking about decentralization, like, listen, I mean, you know, the hypothetical Mm -hmm. question, would you, if you could end the button, hit a button and end the state tomorrow, would you, it's like, well, yes, but, that's a dumb hypothetical. Like we're not going to like, if we ever get to a society where the state ceases to exist, there might not be a day where it's like, Oh, and up until this point in history, we had States. And then after this day in history, we didn't like, no, there will probably, if we get to that point, there's going to be some kind of natural evolution over time where we go from the current systems of, of government, these nation States that we have now and evolve them into things that are you know more in keeping with our principles but it's it's not going to be this this like you know this overnight and even, change and even if they did you know it's, it's like you know what well what happens when you get anarchy you know like 400 years later you're like give unto us a king who will fight our battles and be yes. our judge <laughs> it's like, it's like we give up this is tough. a lot of anarchists lose sight of the fact that if 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 we if we press a button in the state right now first thing that's going to happen is that every, every evil intent of every person's heart is going to come out the next day. Right. And we're going to have absolute chaos. Like yeah. there's going to be more, more murder, more rape, more everything, more violations of the NAP than have than there were with a state. Unfortunately, I don't know if I, I don't know if I agree I'll, with that entirely. I mean, cause I'll I feel do. I'll add to it. <laughs> yeah. Let, let, let me bolster the point before you respond to it. Okay. Because, you know, <laughs> my, my thought, you know, cause I've always said, Hey, the reason we have a government is you know it's not to keep people from being evil it's to facilitate people being evil <laughs> and the and the, I agree uh, with that too. the I mean. yeah b- basically like the whole re- it, it, like people are evil that's not why you need a government it's why you have one in the first place and so it's like the fact it exists kind of proves the point that people are like 
you know, overwhelmingly evil, at, le at least enough to, or si maybe not evil, but sinful, and clearly sinful enough to allow that, you know, stuff like this to exist, not only to exist, but to, you know, they use it for their own self-serving ends, like, hey, who's going to pay for my kid's education, who's going to pay for my welfare, who's going to pay for my roads and bridges, who's going to pay for my cops, you know, I, you know, I want to socialize all of this responsibility out to other people, and when they're, when you're arguing to people that oh actually the private market can take care of this the reason that falls on deaf ears is because that's not the function of the state the function of the state is to help you socialize that responsibility out to other people mm -hmm. and you know and by the same token that you know socialize that out to you and the idea is that you're spreading that cost around kind of like insurance and really you're not it's you're getting like robbed and defrauded and they don't quite get that part but the, the whole reason that this thing falls flat on his face is what you're telling people is that, oh, no more predation. You're not allowed to do that anymore. But they're like, but I like doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that that's the reason that your logic falls on deaf ears. It's like, they like it. Yeah. It's like, they, yeah, again, it's Moreau's, you know, they, they want it. Yeah. It's, it's not just that they, they want it done. It's not that really that they want it done to them. It's like, they want to do it to other people and you know, they're hiring specialists. You know, there's like they yeah. want to focus on their thing and they sure, still want to sure. do the predation. But, you know, they they want to they want to hire a specialist for it. Just like, you know, I don't need to, you know, grow my I, you know, I'm not a farmer. That doesn't mean I don't need food mm -hmm. or that I don't want to buy it. You know, it's just I'm not specialized for that. I, I do other other things. And, you know, it's not that uh, most people are peaceful. It's that they've outsourced their predation to professionals. Well, so 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 with that explanation, I can kind of bridge the disagreement I had with uh, 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 straight Andrew <laughs> uh, to to what you just said. We're all straight, um, here. It's fine. yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I guess like so, my initial pushback was that like I actually feel like for most of society, they get along with their with their neighbors and live in sort of a, a pseudo anarchy already. And although there might be some some fear and sort of like trepidation if a state were to like dissolve and they'd be like, oh, what the heck are we going to do? I don't think that like that would result in like people going like, hmm, there's no state. What am I going to do? Oh, I know I'm going to go around and, you know, kill and rape all my neighbors and stuff. Like, I don't think no, that would well, follow. Most but what no. would, but yeah, what would follow that. is kind of what Andrew's talking about, which is that I'm going to well, be a state. <laughs> well, well, but and then we're going even, to have yeah. state wars. Then well, we have, we have that, a thousand little Negans all, all over the, the, the country. Well, trying, you know. I don't even know if it's even that. I think it would be that people would outsource it and people would be like, well, what are we going to do? Like, we need something. We need something. So they would. Who's going to build the roads? Right, exactly. So they would just instantly go Most back to. Lights. Right. They, they, like, it's not that uh, if we like had an instant transition to anarchy, like th 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 here's the thing. If you don't sh uh, create a culture of people who would sustain a, a true sort of like, um, like, like, natural anarchy if it's just a forced anarchy it will revert right back to the status quo very yeah, quickly there's pent up demand there yeah, yeah. that's the, that's the essential thing is that hey that you know the, this state that we have it's not just fed by one demand function it's fed by two demand functions one is like the actual demand because you know i'm outsourcing my demand for statecraft to professionals it's also that i'm a little bitch and i have pseudo de and i have pseudo demand where i can't stop you and yeah. so, you know, basically this is like, it, it functions exactly the same with the fact you can't stop me in a permissionless protocol that functions exactly the same as, uh, as, as a regular demand does in the, in the private market. So the, uh, so this thing is fed by two different demand functions. It's never going away. And so what you need is like a corporation that can contain it and yeah. actually translate it into, you know, something that's, you know, better approximates the natural order well, and, and, and i, and I, I think, promise no utopia is that i should say hey this is going to be better and to me the the true cure to to statism as as we 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 know it and as we oppose it really is like the church uh actually fulfilling its calling and and truly acting out that that you know the, the love that christ had to us and us having that love for the world and in when corporate. when when the and when the church does that and it goes out mm -hmm. there, the demand for the state will go down. But when the church is failing in that, the demand goes up. And and I've I've thought this for years, um, mm -hmm. but for some reason, it, it, the argument well that seems started to fall with the uh, 
that started with the the reformation. The reason the reformation really took off the way it did was that for centuries you'd had the Catholic Church and the and the Pope primarily as kind of like the international lawyer and peacemaker for all of the kings of Europe, and they were kind of getting and the kings were getting sick and tired of not being able to you know do state reptile shit. And it's like <laughs> yeah, that the Pope's like, oh, you actually have to like you know respect the people's natural rights and stuff like that, and it's like. Is this? <laughs> and so, you know, like Martin Luther comes a along and, you know, well, it was Machiavelli came first. Machiavelli is like, well, you know, you don't actually have to, you know, like follow the Pope. You know, it's like if you actually did it this way, you'd be way more powerful. And that that like, you know, was where we got the naturalism from, you know. And so naturalism being the idea that I just completely reject the existence of supernatural, like so basically everything's just nature and there is no God, basically. It's it's the prototype of atheism. It's the forerunner philosophy of atheism. And so the uh and there, there are several different types, but Machiavelli's was like the atheist kind. So you know, he, he so he's like sent his like the prince and all his writings out to all the Europe. So all the kings know it. It's like, but I still can't I still got this problem in the Pope. And you know, so what happens with Martin Luther and he comes along and he starts like actually really being able to you know rhetorically cast doubt on the pope they seize on this and they're like oh there's my opportunity because now oh well there's multiple christian churches you know multiple yeah there's multiple truths you know i'm just a statesman i'm just a king i have no idea which one's true so you know freedom of religion and mm -hmm. there you go and that that was where you know because and the, what, what freedom of religion really was it freed the the uh, the kings from the pope and and also the and but with it the feudal lords and because when you freed up the feudal lords and the oligarchs underneath the king they rose up to overthrow the king and this is how we got the republics <laughs> well and then so, I'm, I'm gonna say something to really that that'll piss off some of my uh atheist libertarian friends but then when atheism came around the state said ah now that's a religion we can get behind <laughs> yeah. well basically yeah. you know state you know uh la like laicism or secularism is state atheism without the name and you know this it, 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 when you're saying that oh i can't choose and therefore i'm going to choose nothing well okay nothing is a choice so uh, like and there and there it is you chose no god no and, religion and not at only, all and not only and, is nothing a choice but like nothing is a destructive choice i mean there's a reason why in in the like the the parable of the the talents like, mm -hmm. it's not that the, the the lazy servant who did nothing was just, like, scolded because, like, the, the, you know, it's it's not good to be productive. Like, he called him evil. Yeah. <laughs> like, like doing nothing you is just evil. wasted everything. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, be, you be hot or cold time. if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out. I mean, it's just this this sort of passiveness. And, it, and it's tough because, again, well, how it, 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 go ahead. Well, there, there's there's this kind of, like uh war going on in language right because like there are some things some libertarians say and it's like well i agree with that but when you use that term i think it means something different than when i use it you know what i mean it's like You're talking about it, ace again yeah. <laughs> it's like all of my disagreements with him come down to like terminological disagreements yeah. usually sometimes there's there's real fundamental differences but normally well, it's, almost, it's almost like when 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 like a when if you're a christian um and you run into like a mormon for the first time and you're like huh well they they seem to be saying the same yeah. thing we're saying kind of i think and yeah. then you look more into it you're like uh maybe not okay <laughs> <laughs> maybe not <laughs> A little bit. Um, yeah, I, I'm not familiar with Mormonism enough to you know talk about that. But well, oh yeah, there, there's a lot of there's it. a lot of things that were like Mormonism will use the same like phrases that that Protestants use, but it they means sound like Christians. different things. Yeah, it's not. like <laughs> it's all, actually Mormonism is almost like a um like I don't know if th this would be a little a weird flex because Mormons are usually more right wing, but Mormonism is almost like they 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 they're doing something right. They well they they co opted the left tactics of subver of subversion basically because like like the way that they work is they try to they they larp as christians basically by subverting all the christian language and and culture but basically like underneath of it is a cult that's completely mm -hmm. not christianity because it's a it's a it's actually a fundamental denial of the, of the gospel if you want to get into it because it completely destroys the biblical understanding of, of who Jesus is and what he did, but that's a conversation for, just, for a yeah. different time. Yeah. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I don't know anything about it. I can't speak to it. 
I'd, I'd like to go. I'd like to go back just a little bit. You're talking about about the, the parable of the talents and all that, and and something something jogged in my mind about the pro that versus the prodigal son. Like, how how do we balance on the one hand, God Himself, Jesus, saying, you know, that someone is evil for wasting what's been given to them, and then we have the prodigal son on the other hand saying, you know, we're we're, we're it's a it, it's supposed to be the father talking to talking to any any Christian, right? Like, yeah. yeah, you've wasted everything, but I still love you. I'm gonna welcome you back. Like, I yeah, think I so. So here's here's oh, where I can I throw. Can uh, well, well, let me. I'll take a shot at it first. I think there's almost there a example of like the sunk cost fallacy, which is like, listen, God hates if you do nothing, but mm -hmm. if you just go, ah, well, you know, God's mad at me, so you know, I'll just continue in my doing nothing because I've he's already mad at me. I don't. It's like no, like like. There's, there's no, a reason why, <laughs> right? Like, like, like God's always outstretching His hand, hoping that 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 we, you know, we will repent and turn back, um, because it's like, you know, like the only thing worse than all the rebellion you've mm -hmm. done up up until this point is continuing yeah. it for one more day. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're just like at you're just adding, you're digging the hole deeper, right? But the uh, you know, like with the parable of the talents, like if you do nothing with it, you're definitionally losing out to entropy. You know, second law of thermodynamics doesn't go away, you know, that uh, you know, entropy always increases. So, you know, when you're doing nothing, you're losing to entropy like, well, and, by and, default. And so, with the prodigal son, you know, the way I would square that is like, you know, let's you know, move into a monarcho capitalist society where you have a prodigal son who squanders all of his inheritance or, or whatever. Well, Hey, I still need to hire fry cooks somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> fry cooks and baristas. You know, I got, a, I got a monarchical capitalist a society, you yeah. know, I was like, I, I, so yeah, he's welcome. Yeah. Welcome back. Here's your job. And uh, you know, put on your apron and show up promptly at nine o'clock or you're fired. I'm kidding. <laughs> and, so, you know, the, but yeah, I mean, it's like your life is going to, have consequences actions have consequences and bad actions have bad consequences no shit and wait wait, the, wait, wait. Uh, are you saying if you love somebody that you don't like you don't shelter them from the consequences of their actions well no what you would say you know that, <laughs> that would not be justice you know, but again god is love but love is just huh. so when you so when the uh Wait, you so know, teenagers so, can't make life-changing decisions before they turn 18 i know right wow. you know it's like what do you mean i can't cut my balls off when i'm six <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so like when, you know, God wants you to come back and the, as the thing is like the prodigal son didn't get any sort of, you know, welcome back until he actually came back. And mm. so the, so the mm -hmm. idea is that, okay, you're out there, you're in chaos and now you're like, God, this chaos sucks. You know, it's like, this is not, you know, this is liberalism. It's not what I thought it uh, up to be. And now I got Fauci on the TV telling me I'm not allowed to go to eat, to go to Thanksgiving dinner. So this liberalism thing sucks. How about I go back to the thing that worked with the Christian monarchy and we're going to, and we're going to try and we're going to say, Hey God, please take us back. Please, you know, be our King again. And so we can find And so we can forsake you and go ask for our, our own King. But the, anyway, anyway, the idea is that, Hey, you can, uh, uh, it, like you have in order to actually get, you have to come back and be worthy, you know, but not like worthy, but like you have to at least repent and say like, I'm sorry. I you know, help me restore order in my mm -hmm. life. You know, and so, you know, the, the uh, like, it, like the way you actually deal with a drug addict, this is the, uh, the, the, you have the homeless industrial complex and then you have, I uh, forgetting what they're called is it's like something street, you know, where, you know, they're like two very different approaches. One is like just completely enabling where you're just giving them stuff. You're giving them the, the clean needles and all that. And you're just enabling the homeless guys. And there's another one I'm forgetting about Curtis Yarvin. He, he, uh, uh, pointed it out one time that like the way this uh you know particular homeless uh thing works is it's basically like authoritarian control it's like you're not allowed to talk to that person it's like if you're a bum and you don't want to be a bum anymore you go to these people and they'll help you get your life together like they're all, all former bums and you know they're they and the way they do it is just, they just like apply authoritarian control to you like don't talk to that person. You're not going to sit. You're, you're going to be right here at this time. And, you, you know, I'm going to you know, sketch out every single part of your life for you. And you will make no decisions because let's face it, you suck at this whole decision making thing. And you and they're helping you restore order to your life. And this is kind of the way I would see stuff like that happening in a, in a mon cap society, because. You know, it's, it's like, like this is about, you know, promoting order in society. Love definitionally promotes order, you know, that because the order is what God is. That's that's what order is. 
Yeah. And so it's the image of love. It's proper order. These this two, is, these this certain... is one, of those moment, mo one of those moments where, where someone gets triggered by something that you said, but I'm going to let you hash it out. Um, unlike most people, I think. Um, what what you just said sounds a lot like you'll own nothing and you'll like it. You know, a la great, great reset. So could be what's, what's and... well, what's the difference there? Because I'm, I'm not, I'm not into that, you know, but, but well, like, the, I'm, I'm tracking uh, with you on the drug addict thing up until the point where you say I can't own anything and I'll like it because you, know? you can own the, well, two things, you know, one, you could own the shares. Uh, you could easily own your own property and just contract out to the, to the uh, private state. That's fine. And, you know, they, uh, and it, you know, theoretically it's going to be bad for their reputation if they just overthrow you, you know, violently. Sure. And you know, that's, that's not great for the reputation. Yeah. Theoretically, that's a, that I, I don't really think it is, but the, there are two other things that you can, that you can do. One is you could actually say, okay, I'm going to have my own private covenant HAPA style and my covenant will then, you know, you know, a contract out to it, to the state. So now I actually do own the land through a covenant, you know, through my private covenant, you know, like the, you know, like the, the covenant of Israel, you know, like that. I mean, Hey, it is a, it is an anarcho covenant. And now that just the, the, the covenant would contract then uh, uh, with the private state. And the third way is that you could just own the private state. You could own shares and they're never going to attack their shareholders, shareholders, because that's a quick way to get their, get their shares like short sold because that, and that's also a, a uh, another wonderful thing about why I think a, mon cap society would necessarily be one that would you know extinction war is that yeah well well what is war it's the single most unprofitable thing you could uh, action you can get so if like if your whole bit business is to make profit like the worst possible thing you could do is hey let's go on a mass murder campaign you know spend tons of money and yeah and destroy you know all kinds of wealth when i could have just bought it you know what i mean that's like it's so, so much cheaper and easier to just buy it you know that, that uh, like you could and it, like let's say it's like okay they're a hostile you know there there's a, a a state next door and you know obviously like they're not, they're not selling well what do you do hostile takeover you know it's like you just buy the shares on the on the market and you uh and you, you just you just buy them and, and it's so much cheaper and easier than going to war with them and you get way more profit on the back end you know and we're and uh, everyone kind of leaves happy because you know hey they, they're happy to give it up for a price everyone has a price but don't you and don't you so, think don't you think that if if you had one private law society and another private law society mm -hmm. operating under different rules and one did a hostile takeover of the other wouldn't the one that gets bought out view that as warfare no, it's like they're getting paid for it. You know, it's it's like somebody they're paid sold. for it, but they're but they're losing their ability to self determine. Like, uh, what was it? I mean, I'm, I'm sure that was that was uh, you know, they took consideration of that before they sold. All, you know all I'm I mean? gonna say here is, you spare the rod, you yeah. spoil the child. Go to bed, <laughs> David. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, but yeah, so if you you know. No matter what, and by the way, there's also like the other human factor that, you know, remember like, okay, like when Caesar and Pompey were, you know, still co-consuls in Rome instead of like killing each other. Uh, well, what, well, the, the way they secured that was because, okay, you're a big, big general with lots of military men who swear loyalty to you, not to the Senate, <laughs> to you personally. And uh, so the Senate can go fuck off, you know, <laughs> and, and yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, and so but both these guys have massive armies and how are we going to trust each other given that we're, there's only two of us. So there's no like third deal, deal uh, there's no like kingmaker or anything like that. There's two of us. How do we, you know, get along? Well, what happened? What was uh, Caesar's like, well, I have this daughter named Julia. And how about you go? How about she, uh, Pompey marries Julia? And it was working really great until Julia died in childbirth. And so basically that was how they said, you know, and this happened all throughout the middle ages, what, what, you know, where, Hey, I'm going to marry my, my daughter off to you so that we don't have to kill each other. Now take that, you know, now, again, the problem with that is there's really very, very little redundancy. Like you only have one Julia. So what happens when you have, you know, shareholders who now you have a separation of ownership and management of government. So now I have like billions of Julia's. You know, yeah. who are like you know, instead of one human shield, I have billions of human shields. So now I have a lot more redundancy in the system. So you know, if, if there's an idea like, hey, what if I were to like, if I'm a state, and what happens if I want to nuke a city? You know, it's like, well, I'm necessarily nuking like my shareholders' uh, 
I'm like, I don't really right. want to do that mm -hmm. because I, I'm nuke, I'm nuking like all the hostages. What you're doing is basically, what you're basically doing is engineering peace by making it so that anything but mm -hmm. peace is a lose for everybody. Like yes. there's no, like anybody who tries to break the peace will instantly be, will be a, not just a, like, like a losing, like in, in terms of like their life, but like oh, yeah. they will lose their power because like, you know, I mean, like shareholders are going to be like, uh, this isn't good for business. You're losing us money. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they're, they're going to be instantly stripped of whatever authority they have. And the people that are, are more responsible with those resources will be. And if, to the top. and if somebody like you have a public state that doesn't have these incentive, and they decide to attack one of the corporate states. Well, now I've I've also ensured mutual defense because you get, again, all the hostages are right there. So it's like, okay, hey, my son, you know, lives in this place that's being attacked by a state. I need you, you know, to uh, you, Mister Private State, to go join all of the other private states and gang up on their ass and nuke them <laughs> or something like that. Right. And yeah, because hey, this is a private society. There's still private nukes. <laughs> that's not that's not going Mick away. Nukes. <laughs> yeah. Nukes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the. Uh, like yeah so you've basically engineered a situation where you know you know, like you know anything that isn't love you know is you know not really incentivized it's or at least there, there are strong countervailing incentives against it so it's like it's not that it's zero you know but like there's strong countervailing incentives against it that do not exist in any meaningful form right now so this is like okay, like why is the why did a, like I mean think like with Iran, like why would you never make a treaty with another republic? Because the next administration can can come in and just like nah, I'm not doing that. And it's like you made the deal with that guy. You know, it's like when, you know when Obama had that uh, that deal with Iran, and you know and Iran was you know correctly said, hey, we want everything up front because we know who's coming in behind you, and we can't possibly trust them. <laughs> and so yeah, that was that was why that happened. And so Trump came in and it's like, yeah, we're not doing that anymore. And so Iran was smart to say, yeah, we want to, uh, you know, have, you know, our part up first. So the, uh, yeah, they, they uh, yeah. So, but when you have a, 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 like kind of a mon cap society like this, you don't have that problem because everyone's correctly incentivized and you, and, and, but, you, and you, so not only do you have strong countervailing incentives, you also have, you know, cheaper options, cheaper, better, higher ROI options. So, I mean, they, they, so, you, and that's an, an, a problem you have, like, where, where, like, classic states, like monarchy, there is no restructuring mechanism. Like, what happens if you have a bad state, a, a bad monarchy? It's like, you're kind of shit out of luck and hoping he gets invaded by a better king. And, you know, and then there's the whole invasion thing, which is still a problem. But, you know, like, hey, if you have a bad company that's, you know, down on its luck, well, this is what Mitt Romney's for. No, the, like the vulture capitalists or whatever and the the uh the guys the restructuring guys they come in restructure your company sell off parts of it that are just not working sell off assets and load you up with debt and whatever whatever it takes to make you profitable again and you have a sh and because you have a shareholder mechanism it's done easily you know you just like you just share sell them shares you take out some debts and you give these guys the ability to make some that make better decisions for you and they you know, reorder your life kind of like you're the homeless bum and yeah, and you can do that with a corporation. You can't do it with a monarchy. You know what I mean? It, it, it's part of the problem here, like where maybe like people are deaf to to to, to a lot of because I think a lot of these ideas, like especially the more we flesh them out, just make perfect sense. And I often wonder why why so many pe so many people get maybe triggered by them, or at least are you know not willing to take them seriously. I feel like part of it. To, to kind of get back on the, the, the I, I can, message I can, of Christian. In one sentence, I can say it because they reject God as their king. Well, yeah, that's, that's where I'm going. <laughs> um, <laughs> there you go. But, Sorry, I didn't mean no, to steal so, that point from you. But well, but So um, uh, a friend of mine, Stephen Rose of the Etica Christian podcast, just recently did an episode entitled Monarchy. And he kind of went through uh, – it was, it, was it was a good episode. He kind of went through um, – uh, kind of did a summary of Papa's democracy, the God that failed, you know, said, you know, okay, yeah, you know, monarchy better than democracy, but, but, you know, monarchy is still not good. One, one of the things he said, though, I found to be uh, incorrect. He was like, you know, it's wrong to con conceptualize Christianity as, as a, as a, as a religion of monarchy. Cause That's he, he which I was like, yeah, I, I, I was like, I think, I think you're off. I, I was like, you know, and, and Stephen's usually pretty spot on with things, yeah. but I was like, this is a, a, an area where I had to disagree with him. Um, but I was like, to me, 
and, and it's like so his conception and I, I agree with it and 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 i'm kind of going to attack him with his own argument he says well um you know jesus is our king and that's the vertical relationship but all the horizontal relationships are are you know in a biblical sense should be an anarchical and i'm like but to me i'm like yeah but see you can't have the the anarchical horizontal relationships without the monarchical vertical relationship mm -hmm. like they depend on each other yeah if you don't if you don't have that authority and so i think what where people get they, they miss it's that yeah they reject god as king and then also it's like it, it, it's it, in the same way they're rejecting god they're rejecting the proper uh role of authority yeah. and what they're doing is conflating freedom with freedom from authority which is not what liberty is nope. about like liberty proper is about authority yeah you know, liberty is about freedom from tyranny but not freedom from authority um yeah. and, and in fact i think you are the most free when there is the most um, just and competent authority present. And there, there's like, you can have an, an anarcho tyranny, 100%. And an anarcho tyranny is not freedom. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's a, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it says, hey, the truth, you know, the truth will set you free. You know, where the spirit of the Lord is found, there is liberty. Who is the spirit? Love. You know, it's, it's, you know, the spirit is God and God is love. So the uh, and another way you could you know, kind of quickly prove this is that, you know, that why I, and why I call you know corporations monarchy. It particularly is well okay uh is god a trinity yes you know and god is also a king so that trinitarian structure is king you know it's monarchical and the and even if there's you know volunteerism there he's still king so if the if the corporation is like you know has to like voluntarily get you to hand over your money it's like that's still monarchy yeah well, and, and because you know, this Paul... is, and it is the proper kind of monarchy and you know and you know in you know, and Kath, I, I, you guys agree with the definition too, as Protestants, but uh, where uh, you know the Catholic version that you guys agree with of of, of liberty, it's not that you have uh, freedom from all constraint or that or freedom from all compulsion or whatever you want to call it. It's that you have the freedom to choose the good because only the go only the good only love does not carry constraints. Sin being, intrinsically yeah. carries constraints. Well yeah, being free from the state to be enslaved to sin is just like, you know, I've I've traded one slave master for another. There's there's yeah. no victory that that's been achieved there. They're not um, even go they're not even like golden handcuffs. They're like, you know, cheap <laughs> cast iron handcuffs. They're heavy and they hurt your wrist. It's like it's like this there's nothing Shackles. good about this. There's nothing, yeah. There's nothing redeeming about about this. So why, you know, why, why do I, you know, it's like saying, okay, I'm free to sell myself into chattel slavery. It's like, it's like you want, like you call that freedom? Yeah. It's like it seems kind of paradoxical. You know, it's I, I, I mentioned to, I said to Ace, you know, I see this as like, you know, you, you're seeking freedom in the same way that like, you know, you're seeking chastity by sleeping with the football team. Like it's literally the opposite of well, what and this doing. was something where sometimes even like you know some of my fellow Misesian Austrian libertarians will kind of miss the mark a little bit. I mean, it's good yeah. intention, but but they think that uh, libertarianism is fundamentally based upon individualism, and I'm like, it's just I, I think no. like I'll, I'll, I think. I get where they're coming from with that. And I could, you know, I, I could, if I don't want to get into it, but I could steal me on that argument well. But the problem is like, if so you have, if your focus, if you, if, like, if what you put at the high of your hierarchy is the individual, that is pathological, I think, at the end of the day. Because, um, we're, yep. we're not meant to live as isolated atoma like atomized Atomatized. individuals like yeah, yeah exactly yeah. like that's just not that's not how that's not how we work and like if it's if it's the individual it's like well why stop at the person right especially if you don't believe in god like if you take yeah. religion out of it and you have individualism it's like well why stop at the person why not go down to the the cell or the atom it's just like you know why is it arbitrarily because like because honestly now, and, and some athe like, I feel like atheists just reject this out of hand. But to me, this is a serious contention. Like, if naturalism is real, then free will is an illusion. Consciousness is an illusion. We are just giant bags of meat and chemicals and chemical reactions and highly evolved stardust. It's like, what, what, so why does what I'm doing on this level 
matter more than what's happening on an atomic level or a quantum level or what's go bigger on a on a on a on a planet light level or a universal level. It's like if there's you nothing can't, to, you can't if, even have individualism without borrowing from our worldview. <laughs> yeah. It's like you don't get to you don't even get to the individual. It's like, like because let's face right. it, it's like how did the individual even come into existence? Through other people, you know. It's like how did he get like raised from a baby? Where you like they and uh you know, like by other by his parents and individuals and, and you don't think they owe any that the that their kids owe their parents anything for that? Nope. Nope. I'm like, okay, well, clearly you're not using natural law. So how did you get to this idea of morality? And then like, oh well, I use natural law. And it's like, well, okay, you have like some dumb bastardized version of, of it that is absolutely inconsistent and it's it's like not even a it's, this is not a coherent version so it's like the it, you know it, the uh, the idea of natural law is that okay you can tell by how man's nature is you know th that how he's kind of supposed to function it's pretty it's so stinking uh, you know the it's funny because thomas aquinas was like the idea that you know, from man's nature, it you know that morality becomes so obvious for how we're supposed to, for how we're supposed to work. And I kind of took it that you know the opposite direction is not only is it so obvious that you know the, of how we're supposed to work, but you know it's so obvious that in order for me to you know evade that, I have to be really really clever to figure out a way, figure out a new system of morality so I don't have to do that, <laughs> which is exactly actually what happened is that uh, you know and, and that now you have like libertarians who are trying to come up with a new system so they can ignore how you know natural law actually works and like they don't want to have any sort of positive unchosen obligation that they actually have to keep because like it, right another yeah, thing that's a major that, issue another it's like, thing like it, the, the Kinsella cult does which i'm just like this is so retarded it, it is like the, you know they say hey promises don't exist you know it's like oath you know six thousand years of hey we've settled on how this oath keeping thing works works this is a functional part of, of our civilization that we're founded on and they just want to throw all of that out the window and say okay you, you know you don't have to keep your promises anymore if you tell a lie that's totally okay and what it ignores is that you have an obligation to tell people the truth because well, exactly. otherwise and you, it's fraud and, and you it, haven't it, you are your brother's keeper like without that positive obligation to your neighbors you cannot have liberty like and, and people will go oh well that's positive rights bro it's like Listen, so? I'm not going to force you to love your neighbor, but if you don't, you will not have liberty. So, like, it, this isn't about like me trying to like like backpedal well, it into some kind of. To the, uh, it, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier with, with like, okay, it, you know, it's like, oh, okay, so I've given you know, like, kind of like that Bane meme that I keep sh sharing. It's like I've given you a really sound logical argument for why I own myself. <laughs> right, yeah, and, and this like, gives and you this power gives... over me. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, of course not. It's like you, you need you need Batman for that, and yeah, you know, and it's like in the same way, you need you know, as a kid, you need your parents. Like the kid has a natural right to his parents' work. So wait, and, is Elon Musk our Batman? Is he the hero we deserve, but not the or, no, is the hero we need, but not the one we deserve? I don't know. I'll probably, think about that. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, the but yeah, like the this idea that hey, the, though by the way, now because a, a child has a natural right to both his parents, mother and father. It's like okay, well now I just threw you know all of the, you know their homosexual and trans garbage out the window, because that you know I just established a natural right right there, and they're just like oh, oh I don't know I don't know, and they're just utterly incoherent about how about how they apply their 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 laws, and so I was just like I I don't take them very seriously. Well, and the other thing is like to have a low time preference for the future means, and like and Jordan Peterson actually breaks this down brilliantly. He's like. He's like, to do what is right isn't just to do what's right on an individual level. You have to incorporate, yeah. is, it, is it good for me? Okay, you start there, but then is it good for my family? Is it mm -hmm. good for my community? Is it good for society? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's like, you, you have to analyze it at each one of those levels. If you just start with that first one, like, is it good for me? Okay. Like, well, then it just, you know, this is also, how, this is, this is how you end up with, you know th these generations of 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 kids being raised without their parents yeah. it's like oh was it good for me it was my individual right i didn't have to do it it's like yeah well while you were you know freely celebrating your individual right to like abandon your kids and stuff like you you're fucking society like like you're literally and i hate to be vulgar but like you were literally like it, and it is yeah. I, I don't know if it's exactly Vi like violence towards society, but it's pretty damn close. It's antisocial, yeah. very it's like, antisocial. Because what you're doing is you are making society radically 
more unsafe. You are making it a radically less safe place to live. Far more costly, I, far more chaotic. You know, yeah. it's like <laughs> what could, you know, you've done manifest bad for everybody. Everyone else's life just got harder because you're an asshole. Yeah. And and you're an untrustworthy asshole. So maybe they don't have to associate with you anymore, but even then now they're losing out on your production. And so now their life got, you know, that much harder anyway. And, well, and, so, and, and, and I know this isn't, you know, from the Bible, but, you know, I, I've always loved the Spider-Man story because the whole line with great power comes great responsibility. It's like, you know, th that that is to me a, a very, a very biblical lesson, like like yeah. with great freedom and with great power. Like there has to be the highest amount of responsibility with that, because if you if you don't take that responsibility on voluntarily to preserve mm -hmm. that 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 freedom by the proper use of power and, and to claim like like Spider-Man doesn't run away from his powers. He's like, oh, it's too much power yeah. for me. Power corrupts. Absolutely. I can't have this. I have to give him up. Like, no, it's like no. he takes that power. He says, no, I was given this power for a reason. And it's to to do good to society, you know, to. Yeah, to, it's, the, it's the difference yeah. between the, the hero and the villain archetype. The villain takes power for evil and the hero takes the power for good. One purifies, one corrupts. Well, and, and almost and almost the hero doesn't take power. The hero is given power. Like the villain takes oh, power yeah. that's unearned. The hero you know, either through circumstances or others is, is given uh, power and kind of like, yeah, almost like not seeking it. And it's, you, it's like, when unless you, you're when Iron you, Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, uh, I mean, where it's like, what are you, you know, without your armor? It's like, I don't know, billionaire playboy. <laughs> right. I'm like, okay, it's still, pretty, it's still pretty good. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, the, the, uh, if you are like, it, it just assumes that, okay, you, you have no coherent foundation for where you got your 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 morality from. You just kind of made it up yourself. So it's like this is just your personal opinion. And the the uh, whereas like if I can you know, I can point to like human nature and say, well, clearly here this you know man is a social animal. We are designed to live in a society. We are not. You know, we definitely don't birth ourselves. So it's like. But like off the bat, you're throwing self ownership out the window because you know, at, you know, at least from that point of view, because like you didn't build that, you didn't create that, mm -hmm. you, you did not create yourself, you did not raise yourself, and so if you're if you're going to go go on, well, now I just automatically own myself because I inhabit myself. It's like that's that you're confusing ownership, which is a moral mm -hmm. claim on a piece of property, with you know, inhabiting it with squatting. We, basically, we earn self ownership. Yeah, and you and the way a child, you know, in like at least in the Christian idea, the way a child becomes an adult is that they actually start taking care of themselves. And it's like, yes. I, you know, I, I am no longer the obligation of my parent, and no, and not only that, I'm able to do it for other people. Like that is the mark of adulthood is when you're not only you're not just self sufficient, you are sufficient excessively, you know, to the point where you can take care of other people and make good on your, on your obligations to the rest of society. Yeah. Because again, man, as a social animal, Un we're not individuals. Unearned so. freedom is like the most dangerous thing you can give somebody. It's like unearned and power. any, and anybody who disagrees with me doesn't have kids. Oh, like a hundred percent. Like, like the only way you can refute that is 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 that you have never been responsible for another human being because if you ever have been you know that unearned freedom is a really dangerous thing to give a child i mean so and and, and that's, well, it's, that's it's power without responsibility it can, it can be yeah. dangerous for the child itself like yeah like if they haven't earned that freedom then they they can be dangerous to themselves oh easily and the and the idea that that uh and by the way, you know, when that child grows up and you grow old, it's like they need to start taking care of you because, you know, you, like you are the uh, like they, they, you raise them, you put a, an enormous amount of investment into them. And that you're know, basically in the in the natural order, your kids were your retirement policy. So you had a really good incentive to be nice to them, love them and, you know, and invest properly in them instead of investing in your own lifestyle. But you, you know, don't because, need that anymore. We have we have Social Security. It's like yeah, and you know, this has gone over well, like a lead balloon. Social security has like in the same way that like like Good food luck stamps the and welfare <laughs> has like caused single motherhood. It's like it, it, there's also mm -hmm. been like social security and all this stuff that's been aimed at old at, at the elderly has sort of destroyed um, not the nuclear family maybe, but like sort of that like the the the, the more like multi generational family that that yeah. really is supposed to be there.
And the, uh, and again, it's like when you do again, they're using force. So you're automatically out of love. That's not, that's not love. And so now you have, you know, unproductive behavior and you have, uh, and the more unproductive and the, you know, what's worse about it is that it incentivizes you to be even more unproductive and even more counterproductive where I'm going to have way more kids outside of, outside of wedlock for the budget's sake. And the, uh, and so now, like, you know, again, this love sin paradigm really, really works well. Whereas like the aggression, not aggression pa uh, paradigm just doesn't work at all. As like, it's so utterly reductive and simplistic that it misses entire classifications of other activities that are necessarily unproductive and counterproductive to human civilization. So the, uh, I think this is like, you know, what's kind of like the post-libertarian moment is when you realize that you know, liberta like libertarianism as it's like formerly constructed, you know, is just, co is, it's the, it's the, uh, the apotheosis of liberalism and it does not work at all. It's like, this is the distilled purified form of liberalism. It, it doesn't work at all. It needs, you know, Christianity, you know, it has to borrow so many things from Christianity in order to get it to work. And that's that, you know, and that's all extrinsic as like, if you, and if I'm borrowing nearly everything from Christianity in order, in order to get my one thing to work, why not just like adopt Christianity? <laughs> you know what I mean? As like, why, why not just be a Christian? And so the, uh, so, so I hear that. And this is, that's basically the same argument that Adam Patrick made when I had a conversation with him a while back. And and I guess mm -hmm. like my only pushback is that like, well, I mean, obviously I, I not even a pushback. Let me start by saying, well, like, duh, like obviously I want everybody to be a Christian and that, that comes first always is, is trying to preach the good news to people, but there's always going to be people that reject it, whether it's they reject it forever or they reject it temporarily. And so, you know, insofar as that's true, it's like, well, if you're not going to take the whole thing, if I can get you to at least, you know, uh, you know, bite onto the uh, you know, like if you're not gonna try, try to think of a good analogy here. Um, if you're if you're not gonna play, if you're not gonna read the entire book, at, re at least read the spark notes, I guess. I don't know, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know, it's just um, well, if, you know, I, if, if you're not gonna be a Christian, at least live in a monarcho capitalist society, which is like necessarily Christian. <laughs> Right. I guess it's like, you know, if you're not going to believe in what the Bible says and in mm -hmm. the, the revealed the revelation that that uh, that we we all believe in here, that's in God's word and what Jesus has done. It's like, well, I can't make you do that. But like, I still want to live in a society where like we're not uh, where we can peacefully coexist. And so, you know, there has to be mm -hmm. something there. And this is like, this is, this is like, and, and like, we're getting near the end here. And this is an important conversation that needs to be had maybe uh, the next time, unless we can condense it to five minutes. But like, <laughs> like the, 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 to me, there's like, the, there, there's a baby in the bathwater of the concept of the separation of church and state that I feel like has to be rescued. Cause I understand the criticism that, that like you oh, and others in the, in the in like the the, the, the post libertarian or praxian crowd mm -hmm. have and it's like but but at the same time it's like um i think that there is and like maybe secular mm -hmm. is the wrong word but like there like to me the church needs to be the church and government needs to be government and i'm not saying that we as yeah. christians should mm -hmm. walk away from government and not try to influence it but we can't turn government into the church because it's a disservice to both of those different spheres that God has, God has, you know, definitely ordained both of them, but, but yep. we have to keep them separate. Yep. And the Please. way, you, and the way you do that is you say my property, my choice. It's like, like, okay, it's my property. So we're not, so we're going to do you know, Catholicism here. We're going to do reformism over there and Islam on somebody else's property. And, you know, but on my property, we're doing the Catholic thing. And this is, you know, this is owned and operated by a Catholic. And so the if you and, don't and, like and, it, you can leave. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. If you don't like it, you can leave. And, you know, and you have a signed contract that says, if you don't like it, leave and I will physically remove you. And so and so the way you uh, you and so what ends up happening is that, OK, well, the state set, you know, instead of saying, well, you know, I'm not trying to get away from the Pope because I want to be a bad guy. You know, and instead of doing that, they're like, well, I want to make a profit. So which religion is actually the most productive? 
Christianity. <laughs> so, and, you know, and then they can figure out, you know, from there, well, which, which uh, sect of Christianity, when you apply it, actually, like, raises profits the most. And so the, uh, and, you know, that, but from right there, you will get to, like, a good Christian society that is extremely properly incentivized by both the church and the state. Because yeah. now the state has an incentive to really look into hardcore and figure out, you know, which of these actually works well. And again, love is necessarily productive, is necessarily profitable. The whole way that value is created in the first place is a derivative of Christian love. Again, value for value traded, you know, create more value because the love is necessarily fruitful. The fruit of the spirit and the spirit is love is itself da -da 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 -da, love, joy, peace, patience, goes kind of faithfulness. Basically, so love creates more love. It is its own, is, it has its fractal relationship with itself. And so it necessarily creates more of itself in the same way that value for value creates more value. So when you have, so the states now, instead of like trying to, to get away from, uh, you know, Christian truth, now they have a, 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 a strong incentive to really seek it out and figure out which one's which. And so from there, you know, you, you know, one of us you know, is going to be right. And, you know, the other guys are going to be like, all right, well, he told us so. So the, uh, yeah, so but that, I consider that a really great problem to have. Like, I really would want to know which you know version of uh, Christianity is the right one. You know, because you know, I want I love God. I want to follow Him, and you know, I want Him to be my King. And because I want Him to be my King, I want my government to look like Him. You know, so it have that has that Trinitarian structure, and I want my church to you know look like Him and also have that same you know same or similar Trinitarian structure. And so the, uh, this is the way I solved that to, you know, to where, okay, we need a, a church to civilize the state because God knows what happens when we don't have that. Well, <laughs> and and, and to be clear, control. like, a, a, and I think that g government and church should work mm -hmm. together, ideally. Mm -hmm. Like to me, I would like to see the government uh, prescriptions towards people who do crime to be less punitive and more mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, less ba based on re rehabilitation and who better to do that kind of re re rehabilitate, um, Reha you know, rehab. rehab than the church. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, there I mean, might be like it. slight examples where you might need specialty, you know, like, you know, I mean, for, for the especially mm -hmm. violent criminals, maybe you need, you know, something different, but for the most part, I think the church can fulfill that role. Um, you know, like instead of having all these, like, cause I know there's been like, and, and Bob Murphy goes into this, yeah. you know, like the different like private prisons and competing and stuff. And I guess eh, that's one option, but I think a better option yeah. would be, you know, it's like, oh, you, you, you know, you committed a crime. It's like, um, well, we're going to, you know, your, your one chance is you got to go and, uh, uh, you know, live in the monastery and, uh, <laughs> and, and they'll, yeah, and they'll you, set you like, straight. You owe people a debt or something like that. If you, if you steal like the Bible, you know, in the old Testament, when you steal, when you stole something, it wasn't that like your hand got cut off or anything. It was that you owed them a multiple of what you stole. So if you, if you stole one chicken, you owed them two or something like that. And, you know, that properly, you know, paid them back for their cost in coming after you and the cost of their trouble, but it also disincentivizes you you know, to, you know, towards the, uh, stealing something because now, you know, the known cost, it's like for the, the steal one chicken, it's a, I have to, you know, the risk is that I'm going to pay back to now I can calculate with that as a criminal and decide that, ah, eh, you know, the risk probably isn't worth it because I would need to be able to, uh, you know, steal basically, uh, three over, you know, basically, uh, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd have to get, get away with it twice for every, uh, one time I get caught basically. And, you know, it's like that, you know, and my chances are just not that great. So it, it doesn't, the math doesn't make sense for me to be a criminal and assuming criminals do math, but they can kind of do basic math, like, you know, one and two, you know, they, they can yeah, do that. Kind of more criminals out there. Yeah. But the, uh, most criminals are morons, but that's because, and, but the problem is there's an ignorance of the law because the law is so god awful complex. So there's no point in trying to learn it, especially if you're going to break it anyway. <laughs> and the, uh, but if the law is really, really simple, like it would be under a corporate law, you know what you signed up for. And again, you, know, again, you had the contract and uh, you know that, okay, if I, you know, steal something, then, you know, I'm going to have to repay a fixed multiple at, of however much it was. You know, I can, you know, any criminal can do math like that. And you would have, you know, all kinds of uh, advertising for that. And I'm sure, you know, you'd have, uh, you know, enormous security, like arbit such an arbitrary level of security. Because again, this proper, my property, my choice, if you don't want to live in, in my security state, then, you know, that's on, that's on you. And uh, that's, uh, you know, you, you're, you have my permission to leave. 
and the uh and so yeah like but what, whatever will happen because again love is love is profitable you know what, whatever's going to be most profitable is going to be whatever actually you know does the best kind of christian love so we're going to figure out what works you know in terms of like criminal rehabilitation and, and more likely it's going to be a lot more like criminal prevention you know like the, the criminal's not created in the first place you know to where hey you don't have bad families that lead to mental disorders and anger issues Pre and shit like prevention that prevention is better than cure so prevention, yeah the, it's the way church, cheaper the church because the church as much as the church can serve as rehab the church can also prevention. you know the, the primary you know i agree the primary function should be like people don't become criminals in the first place <laughs> and like yeah, and Ideally. like jarvin makes this point that like you know in elizabethan england you know, like the you know the difference in crime rate between like London today and London and like Elizabethan England is like a there's like a four thousand percent like violent crime increase. You know, in like the two hundred years, and so you know what happened? It was like the family fell apart. Is what happened? You know, you had a, a whole bunch of wars that contributed to that, but you know, again, war. You know, it's like it's like this shit's not gonna. This shit is just not incentivized here, and you know, it's a completely different system that you know, manages its resources, humans, a whole lot better because again, love is profitable, you know, and we want to make a profit. That's what, that's what humans are here for. And uh, yeah, it works. It, it is. So it's like, I, I see like this, like kind of mon cap system as like kind of the, the next generation of like the ANCAP society. And there's several ways you could work, you could work it, but generally like it solves all of the problems and it gets you back to a Christian society because let's face it, this shit, Christianity works. Yeah, you know, this thing works really, really splendidly well. You know, for you know, from the time the the, the ice age ended, you know, we you know, fast forward about ten thousand five hundred years, we got basically nowhere as a species. We were still brushing our teeth with piss in Rome, and yeah, you know, and then like a thousand, and then like fifteen hundred years later, we're talking on you know, Streamyard. You know what I mean? The uh, we're talking on the internet. So something really, really worked well uh, with, with uh christianity to where like we created all of human civilization and so like ten thousand five hundred years zero progress zero profit you know people are living on like a dollar a day Yeah, you know, most people live on like a dollar a day and now we get or, or or less and then now we're living on you know quite a lot more than that some of us more than others Wait, I think I mean, and, jacob and, is doing a great job <laughs> well I, what I, I, love, I, I love what uh what i think uh not that Tom Woods was the first to make this point, but Tom Woods was the first one that made that like w w where I discovered this was like the, the, the point being made that like the industrial revolution came out of Catholicism, not the Islamic golden age. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like mm -hmm. he just got the book right there, ready to whip out and show all of us. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've been that, that book, it that book is a game changer. I mean, it wow. really is. I mean, it's like, it, it's like it shows like, Hey, the, uh, like the monks actually invented the blast furnace, you know, like 200 years earlier. And then Henry the eighth decided to destroy it because, you know, when he expropriated the church, <laughs> So the uh, basically the blast runners was the th was how we made like really really good steel because you couldn't go from I from like just like cast iron to steel you know without a blast furnace and this was like the main invention that spurned the industrial revolution so in other words you know Henry VIII set us back in you know technologically by like 250 years by destroying the the, the blast furnace that had been invented by uh, some of the Cistercine monks I want to say in you know in England and so you know it's like, it's like they were really doing great things and they inv invented all this, you know, you know, basically all of the scientific disciplines are invented by like Catholic theologians and, you know, the scientific method itself and science itself was originally called natural theology. <laughs> this is, its first name was natural theology. And so like we really changed things around when we got this whole Christianity thing going. And, you know, it's like, well, why wouldn't we go back to that? Cause it, it clearly, it works. So, you know, it's, it's clearly profitable. So let's just like go back to that. And because this liberalism thing sucks and this Republican thing sucks. I, it just does not work at all. And, you know, support me at Mises GOP if you want to go back to all of that. <laughs> Mises GOP.com forward slash donate because we're actually setting that shit up. It's going to work. It's going to happen. Yeah. I wanted to read this quick because this, this, sure. um, this, this fits in and then we'll, we'll wrap up. But uh, I was I was arguing with a, with a lawbert uh, a couple of days ago, and and they made this like snide remark to me, and they were like, uh, in the middle of their dribble, they said, 
um, uh, you don't get to try and herd people into your, and I said, not really uh, your views because you take your cues from an ancient text. And so I responded with, yes, I take my cues from a thousands year old tradition with a deep history of philosophy and science where your views are informed by a leftist cult group think formed by the last half uh, formed in the last half century by ped- pedos. We are not the same. Burn. <laughs> Ooh, boy, burn. Yeah. I, I was like, like yeah. Oh, yeah. Read, yeah, that, like, read that one again. I like hearing that, that, that last part. <laughs> <laughs> read it again. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's like, yeah, like a deep, like, like Catholicism is like, like, why is it a, like, I was like, you think it's a burn that, that I take my cues from a ancient tradition that's like, what? It's like, like, (laughs) this has worked for three and a half thousand years. How could you possibly follow it? Right. (laughs) Like, are you yeah. stupid? And uh, like, this thing is, you know, responsible for building all of human civilization. And how could you possibly follow it? I was like, are you just like dumb? It's like, tell me you're historically illiterate without telling me you're historically illiterate. So, yeah. The, yeah and, uh, but yeah. So, yeah, I, I think this is like, this is like the, the point, you know, uh, of like the post libertarian moment, which like the thing I guess a lot of us, uh, my, my group is all known for is that once you've understood that. Liber- you know, the apotheosis, the distillation of liberalism, th- that is like libertarianism, not only does it not work, but everything that works about it is borrowed from Christianity, and they have to borrow quite a lot more from Christianity in order to get it to work. It's like, why not just, you know, go back to that? You know, like th- this is, I, I, I could say the, the post-libertarian moment is the moment of counter-reformation. This is the moment where yeah, you know, we realized that we it wasn't the enlightenment we should have been conserving. It wasn't the constitution we should have been conserving. It was Christianity we should have been conserving this entire time. And let's go back to conserving Christianity. So let me ask you this. Do you do you think that in in a way my uh my Twitter handle is a little bit redundant? Christ built liberty. Christ built liberty. Well, I mean, where the spirit of the Lord is found, there is liberty. No. No, I think it works, man. Oh, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm just joking. Yeah. So, uh, we, um, I would usually have more time, but we started late. So I yeah, got to cut out here, but, uh, this was a great conversation like always. So, um, yeah. I appreciate both of you, uh, coming on again. Um, uh, before we wrap out, well, I'll give you guys both a chance to, I mean, Andrew kind of already did, but go ahead and like, mm-hmm. like do it again, give your plugs and stuff. And then other, other Andrew, you too. Well, you can see my uh, Twitter handle on the screen. I just uh, had a three-part series so far with uh, LB Muniz, who is the like the scribe for the post-libertarian moment. We are doing a <clears throat> a live reading of a book called uh, "They Have Uncrowned Him," which traces back the entire history of liberalism from uh, Machiavelli, from uh, from Luther. And traces it all back, for, you know, to the Protestant Reformation, and then to liberalism, and then and then onward. And it makes specific predictions about how this, uh, how everything's going to play out. And it's so funny because, like, it was you know written back, you know, the popes back then were like extremely based. Oh my God, this is so much better than Francis, and <laughs> the uh, it's way way better than Francis. And yeah, you know, the uh, anyway, and they were just making one specific prediction after another about how this thing was going to end up in totalitarianism and like a concentration camp like society and how it's going to be a real like just shit show and yeah you know, he's tracing back all of all of this this author and it's so good it's so love, lo- lovely based <laughs> that uh, you know if you if you love making like the lefty lawberts cringe this book is for you and so this you know we're we're three chapters in so far and oh my god is it is it great you can find that uh, that three part series on my channel at uh, you know popular liberty and the first, I think the first episode, I you know, is titled uh, "Liberalism is AIDS," because that's actually <laughs> that's actually a, a title, a quote from the book. Li- so. Liberalism is COVID. <laughs> no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, and the third chapter we did, you know, was kind of the topic we just discussed this uh, discussed about uh, debunking separation of church and state and why this is a completely counterproductive idea. Yeah, we need to do like I mean, we did a good job there, but like mm-hmm. next time you're on, yeah. we need to do a, a a deep deep dive into that. I think. Yeah. Because that's an important and topic. Yeah, you like guys are going to be saying your three Hail Marys a day by the time I'm done with you guys. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <sighs>
you know, the, the, you know, right now, my the the only thing keeping me from from making the plunge is that there are no good Catholic churches near me. Oh, like, God. Yeah. I, like, oh, like there's yeah. nowhere for me to even dip my toe in. Like the one, there's one literally ten seconds from my house. Like I could walk to it, mm-hmm. um, but it is like a den of leftists and oh, God, and, it's the worst. and off. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's it, the worst. It's, yeah. It's, it's not good. It. They 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 don't even hold. They're still not holding indoor services. They give the Eucharist outside to people. Oh my god! What? Yeah. Oh my god! And yeah, but I mean, luckily these guys will sort themselves out in a generation or two because they don't reproduce. <laughs> it's like yeah, if, you, if you want to. Yeah, it's like this. The Catholic Church's mechanism is the you know, institution is designed to take advantage of this fact that they're not going to reproduce, and the guys who are really like down hardcore with the faith, the hardcore Catholics, six or seven kids minimum. So my, so, I'm, always, I'm always telling like the, my, my Christians, like, listen, like we don't need to punish degeneracy. It punishes itself. Like yeah. sin is its own consequence. Like they just yeah. die out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just separate from society and have a bunch of kids and we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. We're going to yeah. out reproduce those leftist bastards as we can keep them from stop. Hey, hey I'm kids. working on, I'm working on number four. So, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely very Catholic right. in that, in that sense. I mean, good job. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm putting a ring on it. In, <laughs> Put a ring on it in two weeks, and we'll be working on it right off the bat. So, just oh, you guys are the out. best. Uh, these are this is these are my kind of people. Four kids and putting a ring on it, P- lovely. All right, <laughs> All right. Uh, Andrew, uh, Christ build, Andrew. Uh, give your plugs quick. Yeah, you, you see my my handle on uh, there on the screen. Um, stay tuned Af- after my wedding. I'm gonna be working on some stuff, some side hustle stuff that I'm gonna want to plug because. I, I don't want to be a, a wage slave very much longer. I want I want to be truly free in my life. So uh, I want to work for myself. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about it when time comes. Awesome. And of course, you can follow me at Biblical Anarchy. And uh, if you want to financially support the show, just because uh, I've had a recent job change and so finances are a little bit tighter than they were before, but I want to, I want to continue to, you know, host conversations like this and continue to, uh, grow the show. So if you want to go to patreon.com slash biblical anarchy and, you know, just hey, throw me three, four, five bucks a month, you know, it, that stuff adds up and, uh, you know, it, it enables me to have a bit more financial freedom to continue to put out content like this. So thank you guys again for coming on. And, and if, uh, if you're listening to this in the far future, you might have to look at, look up on Twitter for biblical monarchy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh. And Christ All right. Monarchy. Right, yeah. <laughs> take care, y'all. Yep, take hey, care, guys. everybody.